I'm ready to get the f out of there. I'm sick of the, I'm sick of my mission. You know, find the big drug people did that. I'm done with following the rules. Dylan is more of a hipster. Grew up in a black neighborhood type white boy, you know what I mean? Just cool as, he vibe better with the black culture. One of the rules of jail is the woods do not eat with kinfolk, which are African-Americans. Man, listen, I don't give a f about no politics. The rules, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you want to sit at the table? Honestly, bro, the truth is totally up to you. running one race and then moves on and jumps to another race. But you can't do that. That's it. That was the last one. David welcomed Dylan with open arms into their group. Josh wanted me to talk with Dylan as a person that holds a position of authority. Dylan, he doesn't want to get wrapped up in the racist stuff. You have to stay with your race. That's how it is. So I don't understand why David kind of encouraged the situation. I've been asked to choose sides. Have you? Yeah, because Josh wants me to eat with either folks or white people. Oh, Prince. Way to go back up. not comfortable with white folk. What's your decision? What are you going to do? I can tell Josh real quick and then I can see what I'm going to do. I got to go out. I got to go. I'm going out. Dallin, I'm out. Dallin, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Dallin. I'm with. All right. This is my, basically, this guy. He wants uh, to run Kimfo because he's more black than white, technically. Yeah, which other y'all are going to do? off, dude. Why would you kill you? Dylan said he's going over to Kimfo. It seems like David doesn't care. Which one was you ever before you came here? You was a G, I know you was a G. You was a one? Yeah. My homie over there. I, I thought he was with him. Boy, right? Yeah, yeah. Does that compromise you or Abner's cover story? Can Were you able to explain to Bishaw how you would have known Abner or that Abner could have been your boy? Mm-mm. It's easy. I just say I know him from back in the day. We from the East Coast. He's not going to question nothing I say. Nobody in this pot will question nothing I say. Charles, where's Charles? Bishaw? Charles. Bishaw, right? Come on down. B. Shaw's leaving is weird because his whole demeanor had changed. So I could tell that he basically didn't like what was going on. Ratcher is like on my A++ list a D.O. I'm thinking in my head like if he only knew like I'm a sergeant, I'm on a SWAT team, I'm an FTO. I didn't did it all, man. So it's like he don't even he doesn't know that course, but like wish I could just say something to him. I'm gonna holler at you in a minute when you get a chance off some one-on-one. -on -one. Just let me know when you're free. I don't wanna I don't wanna talk about these. So Bratcher pulled David out. Um, I don't know what they spoke about.
You know, what I need to know is, if we put you back in, that we can trust you. I know the truth. I know what actually happened. Everybody can't handle the truth. Everybody don't deserve the truth. It's my decision. You're gone for a long time, bud. Did you at any point during that conversation reveal who you are for real? No, not necessarily. Because that's the word amongst the DOs that we got a cop in there. We just can't take that yeah. chance. The last thing we want is to turn the inmates on us. So today you're going to get released. My whole body immediately went in shock. I literally, I literally was shaking. Why the f would you tell somebody that? Could you be that dumb? I thought Angel was very stupid to do that. If I can find another word right now for stupid, I would. So we need to have a talk with you. I think you know why we need to have a talk, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I already know. I don't care what you do. But in here, you're my undercover operative. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You're almost like an employee of the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. So you can't be in a relationship with an inmate, even a consensual. I, I don't think you, you know, fully understand the consequences mm -hmm. of what's going on here. There are other participants mm -hmm. that are in that pod. Mm -hmm. And frankly, your actions have put everyone in serious danger. So what, what I'm gonna tell you right now so that you're not left, you know, dangling and wondering what, what in the world's going on. We're gonna end your participation in this project. You're done as of right now. Do you have any questions of us? Mm-mm. Would you have done anything differently? Do you have any regrets no. to the decision you made? I didn't think you did. Sure don't. Okay. To make it very, very clear, people do not know this is 60 days in. Gabrielle does not know this is 60 days, and she thinks that I'm working for the warden, just to make that real clear. I never mentioned anything about another participant. I only said that it was me, OK? I'm not that damn dumb. <laughs> so I never even mentioned anything about Stephanie. She doesn't have the slightest clue about Stephanie. One of the things I want you to think about is, why did I blow this? Not only did you go full on inmate, but you seem to have said at some point, forget what this is about. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So it might sound a little harsh, but yeah, you blew it and I want to know why. What me and Gabrielle has is real. And if we end up together, I have no regrets about this experience. This experience was beautiful. Due to the nature of this breach, Angela is going to be removed from the jail. She's going to be taken straight to a hotel room where she will not be able to make phone calls or talk to anyone, and her activities will be monitored. Do you think that Gabby will continue to keep the secret that you shared with her? Whatever happens, happens. Like, you know, and I'm, you know, ready to deal with whatever gets thrown my way. I've just been informed that. Gabby has talked to other inmates. She's mm -hmm. talked to MJ about you being an undercover, so to speak. Mm -hmm. She came here to do a job, to observe, take notes, just experience and report back to the chief. I can't believe that. There's no way. She never mentioned it's anything on video. about. They're talking about it. It's on video. We, we've, we've been advised. I'll just say that to you. We've been advised. Now, Stephanie, who was in there with you, she's a target now. Your actions have put everyone in serious danger.
before anybody gets hurt. I think you know what I'm gonna have to do now, and that is shut down the whole thing. Program is done. We're gonna get Stephanie out for her safety, and we're gonna end this. I feel like the scenario that's developing is probably calculated to bring the worst out in me. Oh my God, and then of late with Tebow. It's just, it's, it's not good for me right now because if I continue, I know, I know what will happen. I don't want to be put in a situation where I'm going to have to really do something on camera that I'm capable of doing. That if I get in a fight in there, my son will become a target because they know that he's my son. And I promise you that will happen. We were all sitting on the E in grub time, and I sat down, Matt sat down, and there were some. A, a bag of cloth there, so I put it on the floor. Tebow's friend accused me of throwing his clothing on the floor. Apparently there's a code in jail that you don't touch another man's bag, you especially don't put it on the floor. He goes and he snitches on me to Tebow. And then he talked to someone, whomever, through the door. My son's next door. So I'm worried about my son. This has turned me upside down. This has almost destroyed me. I know I'm a target in one way or another. And if I fight with Tebow, I fight with any of them, my son's an immediate target. They've got buddies on my son's side. This is where it's going to be ugly. Yeah, I mean, it's just safety. Your son's safety. I have to. We gotta get rid of this guy. If I choose not to, I have to attack him. If Tebow goes, I stay. It's as simple as that. And if somebody doesn't move him out, I will tap. I'm telling you what's going on. You're gonna have a hole in the tank. Where we at? He got one. I pride myself on it, my ability to think and assess situations I did not know well to the point where that was something that I did more of a friend because of the problem. Yeah. I'm no dad. I'm just disgusted. It is absolutely inevitable that something is going to go down, and it will pull me in. This is my roommate right here, Andrew. My son, then, by that association, will be under mortal threat. I guarantee you, I would take Tebow out, and then I would have hell to pay. The whole thing, it's bothering me so much, I gotta go. Being in that pod any longer becomes, I think, a mortal threat to my son. Given the tendency to violence, my reaction will be response in kind. I don't want to act that way anymore. I want Andrew to be safe. So I'm falling on my sword for my son. So you want to? I am conflicted because I know how much he wants me. But I also know that what I'm doing is for him. Are you ready to say goodbye? 
saying goodbye to him. That will be the most devastating moment of my life. And it will be. My whole life. The danger is no longer hypothetical at this point. If you call someone a bitch or a snitch, then that means we're gonna fight. Daffron is a dangerous person. There's no genuine, specific reason, but the guy has it out for me. Hey, Brian. <laughs> you are so hot. Can I lay with you? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Now I got my space again. I don't know exactly what's happening, but this is really serious. Daffron gives orders to individuals in the pod, and they follow those orders. He would have no questions about sending someone else to do the dirty work for him. I want to avoid a physical confrontation. It's not worth it. It's not that I can't take a hit or anything like that, but I can't do anything that would compromise my ability to take care of my kids. Sunday morning at 6 a.m. and I get a phone call that Brian's gave me the signal. He needs out. Very tough to book people out on a Sunday at 6 a.m. without raising suspicion. Brian's gonna have to lay low and stick to his training until we can get him out of there. I'll pack your stuff, come with me. Make sure you get everything. Bye, Brian. I love you. XOXO. What was that? You look beautiful this morning. You're all smart asses. When Brian gave the signal, the stress level was pretty high because, you know, if Brian wants out, I've got to let Brian out. But we gave the option to go into solitary confinement, and I'm very grateful that he agreed to go into solitary on his own. I can guarantee his safety that way. He'll be in a cell by himself. How you doing, bud? Good, am I coming Hi. out? Hi. Oh, no, I just okay. had a couple quick questions yeah, that I was going to ask you that I forgot to ask earlier um, that I just wanted to ask. So, um, would you be interested in going to see Pod? Um, so what's it like in here? Um, 
I just want some coffee and I get home, you know? You know, sometimes circumstances arise where you have to just think about the big picture. I don't know the extent of Daffron's power outside of D-Pod, but everybody knows who he is, and I believe that I would not be any safer in C-Pod than D-Pod. My main emotion actually is frustration because I really wanted to make it the full amount of time, but this this one guy is basically preventing me from being able to move forward. I barely slept. I tried to fall asleep a couple times, it didn't work. When I woke up, my stomach was in a knot. And I was like, all right, Chris, you're gonna get good. This is just nerves, da 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 da. And then the day kept going and it kept getting worse. I had my guts turning. It's like, all right, I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Chris was puking up every intestine in his body. <laughs> I couldn't help but think, okay, this guy has a stomach bug. Am I going to be next? One of the guys was actually in my cell with me when I first got moved over and stuff, but he was detoxing off of heroin. And he was just like throwing up the whole time. And I honestly want to stay away from him. Like, I don't want to be by him. Stomach's turning, can't keep food down and gagging a lot. Oh no! Yeah. Have you talked to any of the COs about it? Is anybody? No. Um, no, I ain't bothered nobody with it. I can still stand. So I'm still good for the moment. You feel like you're in need of help that to the point of I'm out of this program that's I have to emphasize this I'm out of this program I've have some signals for you to give us you'll take your towel you'll put it around your neck and you'll just walk around the day room another thing you can keep saying is I really miss good coffee that's another key word when we hear that you're out Take a seat. No, you sit down right here. 
What's going on? I'm just sick. <sighs> what are your symptoms? My stomach hurts, um, and I can't hold anything down. <laughs> Like all my food's been coming back up. I'm starting to get hot. I, just, I don't know. I didn't think I was sick, but I held on as long as I could. I just I feel like nothing about this place is making it better. Oh. The medical furlough is basically a temporary release to get medical treatment, but you have to come back at the conclusion of their care. Medical furlough would mean you could sleep in a hotel room and then come back, hopefully, when you're feeling better in a day or two. It's a hell of a decision. I'm releasing Chris on a medical furlough. Hopefully he can go back to the hotel without anyone knowing, get better, and come back. One moment we were sitting at the table talking, a couple seconds later, some girls kicking in this lady's face. It just goes to show how things can change in a matter of seconds. It's a little scary. When I heard the commotion and I seen them fighting, I felt like, wow, this place is intoxicated with anger and just frustration and the spirit of hate. As a police officer, normally I would get involved but I don't get TV, I don't get entertainment. This is it for me. I had a front row seat. She had her by the hair and was throwing uppercuts, 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 and I didn't have to do anything. It was exciting. know if we were gonna get pepper spray. I didn't know what was gonna happen, so I just did what I was told. You're caged in for 22 hours of the day. What comes out of it. Let's go, lock down. Lock down. Lock down. Lock down. Lock down. Lock down. That fight was the most exciting thing that has happened since I have been there. It was awesome. I don't know what kind of monster I am now. What has this done to me? Go! 
what the f At that point, I was just like, I don't know anything about this show. So I took my popcorn and got out of the conversation because I don't want a target on my back. <laughs> How would you say that? I asked if I was undercover. Who? Um, some random ass lady. Nobody Sorry. has like anything else to talk about. I know, right? Besides, look at people that sit here. Look, their only defense to this is because they, they think I'm pretty. And I will take that all day long. Have you been in court? What? Have you been in court yet? Can you get off my <laughs> No? Get off my You're starting to piss me off for real. We have a reason I've been busy No, I'm a U.S. Marshal hold, dude. I stole from the government. I'm like, look, dude, I'm up here on federal charges. I don't know what you want me to tell you. She's pissing me off. She left the camera after fireplace and I love this. Because she's six days in. The last thing I want to do is talk about my case all day long. Yeah. I don't mind paying, I do not mind paying. Is she gonna count how many days I stay in jail? Mm -hmm. Don't come in here and pretend to be a criminal and pretend like you're going through what we're going through when you're not. Get a life. I'm gonna what you say. You're going home to your kid. I don't know her. It pisses me off. Oh my god, she's in my trouble. Oh no, are you? You're giving me a panic attack. What's happening? You tell me. Do you feel like they know that you're a cop? I feel like it's been, it has been discussed and I've been called the police multiple times. And when but... you have concerns like that, I have concerns. So the way I look at that, we're in an unsafe place. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull you out today.